Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. I would like to dedicate this video to Mr. Klaus Torbe, the creator of Catan. I know for many of you, including myself, Catan has been that perfect game that has introduced us or reintroduced us to this awesome hobby. Personally, for me, it's been a life changer. It brings me so much joy. And one of the reasons I make these videos is to get more people into board gaming. Now, for a while now, I've been asked, how do you combine uh, this expansion with that expansion? And I always said I would do a video. Now, finally, here we are. I'm going to be showing you how to combine the Seafarers expansion with the Cities and Knights expansion. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button and the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It helps a lot. Before we start, you'll need to get familiar with Catan, uh, the Seafarers expansion and all its scenarios and the Cities and Knights expansion. I've made videos for all of them and I've put the links in the video description. The best scenarios to play these expansions um, are scenarios with multiple islands, like heading to new shores or through the desert. I would avoid scenarios where you need to explore unrevealed terrain, like the Fog Island, or those with many smaller islands, like the Four Islands, as these types of scenarios may make it difficult to combat the barbarian army. Whichever scenario you've picked, the rules are always the same when you combine seafarers with the Cities and Knights expansion. Set up the board, numbers and harbours, robber and pirate if any, as per the seafarer scenario, including any scenario specific components, and then place all the other components as in cities and knights. In our house, we only keep the progress cards. We don't use the development cards in the largest army. Finally, place your starting settlement and city like for cities and knights. All rules and actions that apply to roads and cities and knights also apply to ships. For instance, you can use a diplomat to remove a ship. When the barbarians attack in scenarios with several islands, they are assumed to attack all the islands at once, so you need to count all the cities and all the knights and all of them. The knights can also move across the sea if they are connected by road or by ship. You may move an active knight across the sea if you have a ship in between the two intersections. The knight is then assumed to be on the ship. But you cannot just place a new knight on an intersection of sea hexes. A knight must always be connected to a settlement or city of its colour. If you have a knight at sea or across the sea on another island, that route is considered closed and you may not move any ships if this would break this connection. If you interrupt a foreign shipping route by means of a knight or a settlement, that shipping route is considered interrupted in terms of the longest trade route. However, the owner of the shipping route may not break it up by moving their ships bordering the foreign knight. The knight can also be used against the pirate. You can use a knight adjacent to the pirate to chase it away, like you do with a robber. Deactivate that knight, move the pirate, and take a card from that player. The pirate, just like the robber, must not be moved until the barbarians have reached Catan for the first time. That is, if they are in play for that scenario. Now, I'm going to explain the gold fields. If your city is at a gold field, you only receive resources, not commodities. You may not place the merchant on a gold field. That's all you need to know. Keep in mind, uh, whichever scenario you pick, the victory conditions remain the same, uh, but you will need to add two more victory points than what is mentioned in the seafarer scenario. Now, my tips to win at these combined Catan seafarers and cities and knights expansions are start by watching my videos uh, on Catan seafarers and cities and knights. At the beginning of the game, focus on one progress track at least until you get to level three before you move to other progress tracks. It's really important to keep up with the other players on the level of your knights. Even though you can't lose any more cities once you don't have any, it is a very painful place to be in. Avoid it at all costs. Make sure you get progress cards as often as possible. They help a lot. Remember, you will need a second city before you get to level four of another progress track. You will need it for your metropolis. In some scenarios, you start so well on the main island that you don't really have a need to build ships to go to other islands. If you go for a seafaring strategy, get a decent wool and wood production going and aim for the gold fields. So that's how you play when combining Catan seafarers with the Cities and Knights expansions. It makes for epic battles that elevate Catan from a gateway game to an advanced player's experience, especially if you add the extensions for five and six players. 
If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. And if you enjoy my content, consider buying me a coffee or supporting me on Patreon. The links are in the video description. And if there's a game you want me to teach, let me know. Just leave it in the comments. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.